In regards to my last video, I got a few rebuttal points. But in this video, the decline of the white male was the disco era of the 1970s. I'm going to explain to you why I think that this led to the decline. And also, I wanna say this. There are many of you who were saying that my timeline was wrong about the MIG toe movement. That the MIG toe movement got started in the 70s and the men's right movement got started in the 70s in 1971 and 1973, but I would submit to you that those men who were very masculine, who were trying to solve a problem, wouldn't even speak to the MIG toe men of today because they're two different animals. And these men were still marrying, having girlfriends, moving in with women, and dating single moms. So the men's right activists of the 70s were a different classification than the whiny, complaining men of today. Like I said, uh, years and years ago, I was at a fraternity event and a lot of the old school cues had these shirts that said no intake on them. And that's what I feel that the first early men's right activists would not have a conversation with the MGTOW men of today because they're on different levels. It's a, it's a totally different groove. <clears throat> but let's get to the meat of this issue. I was doing some research and oh my God, do you know that Roe versus Wade was decided in 1973? And let's kind of get into the meat of it. Roe versus Wade ensured every woman the right to an abortion. There was some laws on the book called Comstock laws, which prevented, do you know that birth control was not available to single women? There was a uh, Insa Hart versus Bard that opened the door for single women to get birth control. This was like 1971. So the 60s is looking as the, you know, the Vietnam War, smoking the pot, free love. Actually, a lot of this stuff started to happen during the 70s. That's when a lot of this stuff really took off with the repeal of the Comstock laws, which were laws about you couldn't even have material in your house about birth control or abortion. And these laws were on the books since 1873. So the 70s were a, a serious decade because you know, the 60s, we had the clothing, we had the pants, we had the music, but the 70s is when the action really started to happen. And Roe versus Wade, 1973, uh, Ansert versus Barr, 1971, this is when the decline of the white man really started, of the dominant white man. And let me go ahead and say something to y'all, because a lot of you is like that the apex predator white person, these ardent racists, put on police uniforms. Every black person who's been pulled over by a cop who's not been insulted, harmed, or touched, raise your hand. That'd be all of us. So we are, what's the day? The day is July 13th. We got 18 more days to get into the intellectual property school of the program before the price goes up. And I want to show you, I want to share with you the um, things that can happen when you get into the intellectual property school. You're gonna learn so much. And the intellectual property school includes home economics and it includes some very deep details on things that you should do to make money online. Uh, I think in terms of a low cost business, and let's be really, really clear, you're not gonna run out the gate making money. Um, you're looking at doing this for months before the money really starts rolling in. Or in some bad cases, maybe a few years. Um, 
I never really made a lot of money from AdSense until recently. Um, last year was the first year that it was worth mentioning. I made $64,000 last year. And this year I'll make six figures off AdSense. But once again, I have made so much money utilizing a YouTube channel and I will teach you everything that I know and I will teach you how to do it. But more importantly, before we get there, I'm gonna teach you some things that are gonna benefit you financially. So what you wanna do is go below, get into the Intellectual Property School or the program which contains the Intellectual Property School and we can start your education today. Don't wait. I know a lot of you are gonna wait until the 31st to pile in, but don't wait because what you wanna do is go ahead and get in so you can start working on your future today. Today, man, start working on your future today. So once again, these apex predator white people didn't give a damn. They didn't care. So that's a misnomer that they, they just put on these uniforms and they became these race soldiers. And yeah, here and there, maybe you had a few loose wild cannons. And, but at large, and I'm going to say it again because I had a lot of you uh, disagree with me, that apex predator white person has been essentially bred out of existence. There's just not that many of them around. There's just not. And one of the things that you guys have got to understand is when I do these videos, I do a lot of research. And I could show you pictures of black men hanging from trees with white families just milling about. Those are the apex predator white people that I I'm talking about. They don't exist. And many of you are in your feelings. You don't want to come at me with facts and research. You just want to, because you, you, you feel it's this way and it, it, it's not that way. And essentially, and Chris Rock did a skit on it. He said, white people got nicer. It's true. It's true because these apex predator white people were so dangerous that they scared other white people. That white people who did not share their views would not associate with black folks because these apex white predator white people would kill white people. It's like, oh, you're a darkie lover, you gotta go. So they were scared, they were scared, they scared everyone. But going back to the 70s, and I did some research and this kind of blew my mind. The disco era, provided entry points for feminism and along with the advocation of birth control, free love and sexual liberation, women became extremely promiscuous during the disco era. It was nothing for you to go to a disco club, chat up a chick, go to the bathroom and have sex was nothing. That was actually a common event. Studio 54 in New York, these disco clubs. And with the advent of female sexual liberation started the breakdown of the family unit and started the loosening of the control of the dominant white male. <clears throat> because along with rampant female sexuality, came the emergence of homosexuality. This was a big, big part of the disco scene. And because it was free love, there was a lot of sex, there was a lot of drugs, there was a lot of acceptance. You, and if you go back and you look at the number of disco singers who were gay, I mean, that, that's just proof positive that this became a big, big thing. So you had the emergence of female sexual liberation. You had the emergence of homosexuality of Queen Freddie Mercury. You, you started to see that many homosexual men, Elton John, who at one point was considered to be homo heterosexual, he started to embrace his homosexual side. So a lot of stuff happened in the 70s and the emergence of interracial dating. Now this, the uh, 
the loving case, the loving case of this black, this white man and white black woman that got married. They had to go to court to be married in the in the 60s. So we ha had wholesale, once again, birth control, the proliferation of birth control was extremely important to the sexual liberation of women. Because, you know, I graduated high school in 1985 and it was still, cause old habits, old things die hard. It was hard to get a woman to give up sex without a commitment. I mean, you had a few loose women here and there, but across the board, I didn't go to school with pregnant girls. Uh, there was one girl who got pregnant my senior year in high school and she did not deliver while she was in school. And that's when this stuff started. But yeah, it, it became a different situation. It became a different thing. And this is when the white male power structure started to crumble. Now, let's not be deceived. The white male power structure is still pretty strong, but it's not the iron fist that it used to be. And each year, their grip on power loosens and loosens and loosens to, I was doing some research. It is estimated that the white population in 2050, which is 28 years in the future, will be 47% based upon current racial demographic projections. And the Hispanic population base is expected to be 30%. So between the Hispanics and black folks, those two group will, groups will make up the majority of the American population. And the biggest influence on this will be immigration. Unless immigration laws change, white people, which are like 60 something percent of the population now will go down to almost losing uh, 20, 20 points. This is huge. This is huge because as the demographic shift, the law shift, like right now, if you go to Miami and you don't speak Spanish, you could have a problem. So that's what's happened because there's so many native Spanish speakers who occupy Miami that it's become the way of the land. It's become the culture of the land. Uh, parts of Texas, same thing. So once these Hispanics start to come in and to take over and to begin to set up shop, so to speak, this is going to change the fabric of America. Just to put that in there because I, I saw a lot of comments. It's like you were wrong. Like, once again, I, I'm a child of the 70s. I was 10 years old in 1976. I remember men marrying single mothers. Let's kind of talk about this. The single mothers of the 70s and the 60s were radically different than the single mothers of today. A single mother in 1976 would not have a man sleeping over and leaving when her kids got up. She just wouldn't do it. She wouldn't do it. She just wouldn't do it. So the mores have changed. So once again, I feel that back then, because these women didn't have a revolving door on their bedroom, that it was easier for a man to see this woman and say, I will accept this woman and I will accept her child. And I'm about to say something that's gonna be very shocking. I think we're going to return to that. I know you're like, wait a minute, all you mid toe red pill men and all this other stuff. We're going to have a return to men wifing up single mothers wholesale. Because once again, it ain't stopped. There are many single mothers out there who have no problem getting the man. No problem. On the internet, it's like, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. But in real life, it's happening every day. And I see that this is going to be something that will escalate in the future because as we go through the global reset, resources are going to become very, very scarce. And with scarce resources, with the proliferation of the global reset, you're going to see women adjust their attitudes 
and you're going to see men adjust their attitudes because in the 40s, the 50s, in the 60s, men and women needed each other. And I see that coming back. I see that making a big, big return back to the American dating scene. But going back to the 70s, the emergence of homosexuality, that, that, that was huge. Because going back to the apex racist white people, homosexuality wasn't even close to cool. It was, they, didn't, they didn't deal with that. They didn't deal with homosexuality. If you were a homosexual to the apex predator white person, you were just as, you were on the same level as a black person. Same level. So during the 20s, 30s, and 40s, and 50s, men who were caught engaged in homosexual activity were put in jail. They would just round them up and put them in jail and they would look at them with other disgust. So this was a huge, huge, huge part of the changing of the guard, so to speak, because in disco, homosexuals felt safe. They felt free. This is when the drag queen shows started to catch on. In the 70s, you had so much, because you know, we hear about free love of the 60s. Do you know the pornographic movie, Deep Throat, was made in the 70s? And once again, don't take my word for it. You can go on the internet and find vintage interracial porn. Let me say this again, you can go on the internet and find Vintage interracial porn. There was a ton of it. There was a ton of it. And there was one particular trope where this janitor actually raped this white teacher and she liked it. And they started having relations on a regular basis. Go ahead and Google it. You will find it. I mean, and this was the 60s and the 70s that this was going down. Support, you know, supposedly when you know white folks and black folks didn't mix. And once again, the radical sexual liberation movement was huge because women felt empowered over their bodies. Women felt um, to some degree free. They felt free because without worrying about becoming pregnant, this opened up many, many doors. And a lot of women started, like I said, you just Google it. Google sex in the disco clubs, Google sex in the bars. I mean, this stuff was off the chain. And this is why the mid-toe men of the 1970s, and I'm not even gonna say they were mid -toe because these were men who had experienced some adverse effects through the court system and they became men's rights activists. And these men still had girlfriends. They still got married. They still dated single mothers. So once again, these men of the 70s were nothing like these whiny, complainy, low testosterone. Once again, if you Google it, you will see that men of today have lower testosterone than men of 30 years ago. This is a scientific fact. So they're less manly from a hormone profile level versus just activity. So these men were nothing like the mid-toe men of today. And one of the things that I will see, because uh, there was a bunch of infighting in the men's right, because uh, there was this one group that broke off in two groups. And one group that broke off became the defenders of the feminist movement. I mean, when you really start to look at history and you start to look at like Roe versus Wade, 1973, the repeal of, and they, uh, Roe versus Wade was considered a Comstock law, which had been on the books since like 1873. There was a lot of book, laws on the books to deal with reproductive rights, to deal with um, birth control, like. That, that, that case, it was just that single women did not have access to birth control until the 70s. I want you to really think about that. 
doctors were not permitted by law to even discuss birth control with single women. Birth control was for married couples. Married couples. So, if you look at what went down in the 70s, I mean, it was the emergence of so many things. In the 70s, this is something else that happened. It started in the 60s, um, college football. You started to see black athletes appear on these college football teams in the 60s. Uh, Bear Bryant was one of the first college football coaches to recruit black players. And then in the 60s and the 70s, it just took off. It just took off. So that was another thing that you saw. You saw poor, athletically inclined, young black men become rich going to the NFL. And like the NFL didn't pay nothing like it pays now. The NFL, the NBA, um, not, not even close, but they paid good money for back then. Like I think average salary in the 70s was like 10,000. And if you were playing the NBA, you made like 50, 60. So you made more money, but not like the kind of money they made today. So we started to see the emergence of the dominant black male figure in sports. This became a trope unto itself because it was like, hey, we're not gonna let you do this, but if you wanna catch that ball, shoot that jumper, swing that bat, yeah, that's okay with us, that's cool. So that's what the white power structure, the white male power structure thought was acceptable and they didn't feel that this was going to be problematic going forward. Now, what has happened with this number of young black millionaires? And it's a beautiful thing that's happening right now. They're learning from the ESPN, 30 for 30 broke. A lot of these guys are managing their money much better. They're uh, starting businesses. They're becoming very savvy and they're not going to end their careers broke. This is power. This is what's called an unintended consequence. And then when you look at the power of disco, like I used to love myself some Donna Summer. Oh my God. I remember the first time I saw Donna Summer and it was in Kmart and she was on an album cover sitting on top of a jukebox. And I just thought that this was the most beautiful woman in the world. I was just like, just stood there with my mouth open because I was just, I, I, I love me some Donna, Donna Summer. Just love me some Donna Summer. And you know, I cut grass and saved up all my shillings, got all her albums and stuff. And I used to just look at her, it's been hours staring at the album cover because she was just that beautiful to me. And I wasn't the only one because Donna Summer, Gloria Gaynor, uh, Village People, a lot of these groups started to open up people because if you didn't know, the majority the members of Village People were homosexual. <laughs> this is, because what happened was, it used to be going back to the apex predator white people. If you were homosexual, you were persona non grata. You could not show your face in public. You could not entertain. You could not clean. You could not cook. You literally had to stay in the bad part of town and never show your face in public. What we saw by having these homosexual entertainers, Donna Summer brought a lot of them on board. We had the drag queens. So they were able to come out of the shadows into the public spotlight. And over time, they started to become accepted. And that's when white male power base started to crumble. Because first of all, we got women walking around doing whatever the hell they want to do. That was the first big problem for the white male power structure. What are we going to do with the white woman? And the white woman is the largest demographic in the United States of America, always has been. Largest group of people we have in the United States. So you had this, the largest demographic in the United States of America 
come into power through the feminist movement, through um, a lot of networking and activism. These women came into power, true and real power. And then this happened. The white female started to compete against the white male. First of all, there are more of them. Second of all, they live longer. And this is one of the reasons that you see female representation in college more so than you see male representation in college. This is just one of the repercussions. So you've got the white male who is going through all of these struggles. Now, once again, the white male power structure is still pretty strong, still pretty strong, but it doesn't have the ironclad grip on America that it used to, because it used to be if a white man came in and just said, hey, we need to do this, people would start jumping and making that happen. He would just come in and make a suggestion and the next thing you know, it was done. That, it, it, it doesn't go down like that anymore. It doesn't go down like that anymore because when the white male lost control over his woman, he lost control of America. And when he started to go to court, get divorced, and literally have his hand, his ass handed to him. This created the men's rights movement. And this went on for a long, long time because 1970, 1980, 1990, 2000, about 20, 20, 20 old, 2007 ish. That's when men would go to court and have a fair shot at getting custody of their kids. So these guys worked from the 1970s, the 1980s, the 1990s, almost 40 years for a man to go into court and to have a fair shot at being the primary custodian of his children. It was a 40 year fight. And who was he fighting? He was fighting the white woman. That's who he was fighting. And now, because, you know, going back to my other video, white women going to prison. See, here's the thing, here's the funny thing about power. Power is very, very attractive when you don't have it. It's like the best thing in the world, but here's, a test of a person's, I don't even have a word for it. When you give a person who doesn't have power, power, and they start to immediately abuse it, that's what happens. So a lot of these women started to abuse this power, and typically what happens with power, you can't steal power. You can't just get power. Power is earned. And after many court battles and, and decades and decades, women got into power. And now women are losing their minds because they're not used to have it. See, the, the white male has had power for 2000 years. So they've gotten used to having and displaying power. And this is something that if you read old slave um, text, that a lot of these slave owners were not brutal or even barbaric. And they actually, once again, I know this is gonna sound kinda crazy because it's kinda like someone treating their dog very well because you still own the dog. But a lot of these slaveholders actually treated their slaves better than other slave owners because that's how, I had to figure out how to say that because they were still abusing these people because they were slaves. But they treated them better because one of the things that I've learned is when you have power and you know how to handle power, you learn what not to do. And I think that women, once they came into power and they started to really feel the power, 
I feel that essentially an older woman in power is gonna be much better at managing that power, in, in my opinion, than a younger woman. And a lot of these older women, they've been around the block. They, they know what's up. And they don't abuse their power. But the younger women abuse it all day long. Abuse their power all day long. So when you abuse power, you start to lose power. And this is what's happening. These women are losing power because one of the things is they got what's called positional leadership. Now, what is positional leadership? When you get a job and someone tells you that your supervisor is Sally, whether Sally is qualified to be your supervisor or not, it doesn't matter. Sally occupies that role and you must treat her as your supervisor. That is positional leadership. And a lot of women were placed in positional leadership roles that they didn't earn. And it's starting to crumble because when I started doing the research for white women going to prison, it blew my mind. The number of white women going to prison is skyrocketing because they don't know how to handle the power. And also, let's go ahead and make this distinction. And a lot of you are going to jump all over this, so I'm already ready. Poor white people have never been in power. Let me say that again. Poor white people have never been in power. And poor white people, there's a show here on YouTube called The Wonderful Whites of West Virginia. There's a soft white underbelly. So when you look at the life in times of extremely poor white people, they look very similar to extremely poor black folks. There doesn't seem to be any difference. The pathology is the same. <coughs> so when we're talking about the dominant white male <coughs> power structure, we're not talking about a lot of people. We're literally talking about maybe 10,000 white dudes around the world. Maybe, maybe. And these dudes control a lot of stuff. They control a lot of stuff, but the average white person doesn't have any power. The average white person doesn't have any power, none whatsoever. They may have some social privileges, but pure, unadulterated power, they don't have that. That is reserved for a select few um, group of white men that their numbers are dwindling because it's just not like this anymore. Um, I will s submit this to you. White male homosexual power is growing because my cousin works for the DEA, and one of the problems that they ran into, they used to bring in female agents to try to seduce the drug dealers. And they were running into a problem where a lot of these drug dealers were not interested in the women, because they were gay. They were gay. So that threw a whole nother monkey wrench in their whole program, so they had to start going out and recruiting gay uh, DEA agents. I mean, it's, it's just mind blowing when you really get into it because the, they would get these females and the guys would like completely ignore them. It's like, I don't want nothing to do with them because they were interested in men. So I feel that the white homosexual power structure is growing, is growing because no one's talking about it. No one is really talking about it. And what they're doing is buying up assets and businesses and they're slowly getting more and more powerful because this is what any oppressed group has learned in, in America. Take the Jews. Uh, once again, years ago, I had a roommate named Derek Shop, and we used to sit around and talk about this every for hours at night. And he was like, we're gonna be your doctors, we're gonna be your dentists, we're gonna be your bankers. You may not like us, but you're gonna need us. And this is the lessons that Jews learn. And this is the lesson that gay white men have learned. If we can become needed 
And whether you like us or not, doesn't matter. And this is how they're getting power. Cause like, um, God, what's this guy's name? He, I, I cannot think of his name. I want to say David Greffin or Giffen. He owned Greffin Records, sold the records for $2 billion. And then he came out, he was gay. And that is a big, big thing that you're seeing. Uh, you, you're seeing Tyler Perry. It is rumored that he's gay. I don't know if the man's gay or not. I have no clue. It's just a big pernicious rumor that's been going on. But I see the white male gay power structure just getting stronger and stronger and stronger because they're operating in secrecy. They're not advertising their moves. They're just making their moves and consolidating their power. While the heterosexual white male power structure is crumbling because the number one constituent of the white male power structure is the white female. And in many regards, the white female has abandoned the white male. Not wholesale, because you still have many white couples getting together and getting married, but it ain't like it used to be. It like in the 60s, you would not ever have a white man, white woman looking at a Latino or Hispanic or black. She would never choose one of them over a white male. Today, that is common. I, I have a friend and we had conversations. And there was this girl that he was dating. And then he said, she started to act strange. And then she told him that she didn't want to see him anymore. And my dude was sprung, right? So he started going by her house and stuff. And he said, I saw this huge black man going through her house. I was like, what do you mean huge? He's like, if he ain't in the NBA or the NFL, I'd be shocked. Cause he's like six foot six, nothing but muscle and he walks like he owns the damn place. 1960, that never would have happened. It's commonplace today. And this to the, you know, let's go ahead and go with the classifications. You've got the wealthy white male power structure, which is very much intact, but the average white person that kind of drafted off that power structure is now drowning. They have no power, they have nothing going on, and they are in a world of hurt. So, and he did my, you know, and this white dude, he was just like, he was kind of shook, and he was just like, you know, and you know, he, he says some stuff that I will not share, because um, I had to check him, <laughs> I had to check him. But that's happening, and that is blowing, like, uh, the guy, the incel who killed those people in California, his father was a movie producer. He actually shared sentiments why you're messing with him when you should be messing with me because of similar things. So, the, I mean, the white man started losing power with the emergence of rapid female sexuality, the emergence of homosexuality, in the emergence of interracial dating. All of that happened in the 70s. And that's when the seeds were planted. And from the 70s to the day, it's literally exploded. Homosexuality has become widely accepted. It's like, people are just like, hey, you know, they're homosexual. It's, it's like, if you, you really can't say nothing about homosexuals. If you notice that, you really can't say nothing about them without getting jumped on. And they have become accepted. These people used to be shot. If you got caught doing some homosexual activity, they would just shoot you. They went from that to being commonly accepted, widely accepted in 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, about 50 years. They, did, they went from being shunned, out ostracized to being widely accepted. That happened in 50 years. So in the next 30 years, what happens in America is gonna be very, very interesting in terms of power dynamics and the shifting 
And I'm going to say this, if the economy implodes the way that it's looking like it's about to, Biden is going to be a one-term president. And if Trump runs against him, Trump will probably win. Scary thoughts. Scary thoughts. That's all I got for you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section. All right. So we are, what's the day? The day is July 13th. We got 18 more days to get into the intellectual property school of the program before the price goes up. And I want to show you, I want to share with you the um, things that can happen when you get into the intellectual property school. You're going to learn so much. And the intellectual property school includes home economics and it includes some very deep details on things that you should do to make money online. Uh, I think in terms of a low cost business, and let's be really, really clear, you're not going to run out the gate making money. Um, you're looking at doing this for months before the money really starts rolling in, or in some bad cases, maybe a few years. Um, I never really made a lot of money from AdSense until recently. Um, Last year was the first year that it was worth mentioning. I made $64,000 last year. And this year I'll make six figures off AdSense. But once again, I have made so much money utilizing a YouTube channel and I will teach you everything that I know and I will teach you how to do it. But more importantly, before we get there, I'm gonna teach you some things that are gonna benefit you financially. So what you want to do is go below, get into the Intellectual Property School or the program which contains the Intellectual Property School and we can start your education today. Don't wait. I know a lot of you are going to wait until the 31st to pile in, but don't wait because what you want to do is go ahead and get in so you can start working on your future today. Today, man. Start working on your future today.